Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Behold, I have received commandment to bless. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. By reason of this quality I just showed you about God, I have received commandment on his behalf to bless. And he had blessed. And I cannot ratosh kabarandos I have received commandment to bless. And I have blessed. And based on this quality of God I just described, you would have stopped me from speaking. But now that you did not stop me from speaking, I have said it. And because it's a sworn or commanded blessing, I cannot reverse it. Hallelujah. The blessing is commanded in the place of unity. But the blessing is also commanded in the state of obedience. Now, please look up. The way that we study scripture from a theological standpoint is that every time God wants to bring forth a thought in the Bible, there usually will be an individual who personifies God's idea as regards whatever issue you are discussing. Are we together? So if God is talking about faith, there usually will be an individual who personifies faith so that we are not left in the dark. That every time you are studying about God's value or God's kind of faith, you can make reference to that individual. This is also true for obedience. That is one of the reasons why God names himself after men. For instance, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Is it in your Bible? The God of Jacob. I hope you know that the God of Abraham does not work like the God of Isaac. It is the same God, but the character of operation is not the same. Hmm. Are we together? So every time you face famine and destruction and you are at the verge of shame, you need to understand something about the God of Isaac. That Isaac can sow in a land and he can obtain blessing by an operation of God that even in that same year he can reap. When you desire an encounter with God, that can change your name. It is not the God of Isaac you meet. It is the God of Jacob. The Bible says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Psalm 24. Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says, This is the generation that seek you. And that it seeks you in the similitude of the God of Jacob. So if you want to seek God in a way that you find him, the Bible refers that you go and understudy Jacob. Now we are going to study God's idea of obedience. Are we together? And there is a personality in scripture that is God's reference. That every time you want to understand God's idea of being an obedient believer, to attract the commanded blessing, you will have to study that individual. Isaiah 51. Is God helping someone tonight? Isaiah 51, and we're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1. Yes, please. Hearken to me. Hearken to me. Ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord. Uh-huh. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. Look unto the rock whence ye were hewn. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are dig. I want us to read verse 2 together. If you are a Christian and you are here and you can see. Are you ready? One to read. Look unto Abraham your father. Stop. It says look unto Abraham your father. And to Sarah 
that bore you. For I called him alone and did something to him. And he became blessed and increased. That means he was not born blessed. Study his life. What happened between me and him that turned him from being alone to being blessed and increased? Look unto Abraham. Just stop at verse 2. Your father and to Sarah that bought you for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So let's look on to Abraham very briefly as the Bible tells us. Are you ready? Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We'll begin from verse 1. The first three verses, please. Verse 1. Mm. Now the Lord had said, Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Get thee out of thy country. Stop, please. The Bible very interestingly starts the journey of Abraham with a strange instruction. He comes to meet an idol worshiper who dwelt in awe of the Chaldeans. And I hope you know theologically speaking that Abraham was not the first person God spoke to. Read your Bible. God spoke to his father, Terah. But for some reason, Terah said, no, no, I'm not interested. And he said, I will respect you. Now, Abraham, let's try you and see. I want to swear a blessing upon you and will the earth as your estate. But here is the condition. He says, get thee out of thy country, number one, and from thy kindred, number two, from your father's house, number three. My question is, when you get out of these three realms, what is left? How could God meet a man and instruction number one is to empty you from everything that is an anchor for your future and your destiny. I show you how the commanded blessing. There are men on earth, but we are not all the same. There are men who God has invested his jealousy upon them by reason of their sacrifice of complete obedience. It is this man that he suffers no man to do them wrong. He and even rebuke kings for their sake. Listen, please. Listen very carefully. Are we together? So he calls Abraham. Back to the scripture, please. The Lord told him, get thee out. It's like God coming to you and saying, leave your job. Leave your city. Leave the house you just built. Leave your real estate investment and just start moving. Go to where the name of the location is follow me. I will explain later on. Let me tell you this. You know God is the one leading you because he never gives you the complete details. There must be faith and patience captured in your journey. If it is the God of Israel, no matter how accurate you are prophetically, when God starts with you, he will not give you all the details. Hmm. I'm saying that because there are people right now who seem to be in the middle of nowhere and are saying, God, what is the name of what we are doing? I will soon give you the name. The Bible says, only follow them who, who obtain the promise through faith and patience. That means that is not the only way of obtaining. There is malpractice and many have obtained through it. That means if you study a man's spiritual journey, and you don't find instances in his journey where he had to depend on God and to allow the law of process run away. Watch this. So he told Abraham, 12 now. The first thing you see, watch this. Notice the character of God. He does not just tell you what you will benefit first. He brought the instruction and left it to him. If you will comply with this, then verse 2 now becomes yours. Most times we, join, we jump verse 1 and we rush to verse 2 and claim it and keep claiming and nothing happens. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make your name great. This is powerful. You see, I wish I had the time. 
I would have taught you what it means for your name to be great. Because if you are great and your name is not great, by the time you exit the scene, nobody can inherit your blessings. Your name is a cover for all who come through you so that they will, that relevance will remain. You can be great and your name is not great. There are products we buy today. We are not buying products. We are buying names. Because their names are great. He already said, I will bless you. But the goal is not just to stop with you. I will make your name great. This already is a message maybe to a father here sometime. Find out whether you are just becoming great or your name too is becoming great. Because at the end of your life, your name will be a key or a padlock. One of them. Your name will lock up another man's destiny. Or your name will be the key that opens another man's destiny. Even for God in heaven, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Not just a means of identification. Men can run into it and be saved. Listen very carefully. So he said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3. My God. And I will bless them that bless you. Do you know what it means to be an embodiment of the blessing? That if somebody wants to be blessed and his journey is slow, he quickly blesses you for his sake. That anybody who identifies with you as touching what I have made you, the effect will be rippled on him. And then I will curse him that curses you. Then he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All the three religions on earth, it doesn't matter what happens between us, they all came out of that man. Whether it is Islam, Judaism, Christianity, he answers father to all. Are you learning now? Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For